the, the previous uh, speakers asked the question, we need more plant scientists. I didn't see, I was disappointed, I didn't see everybody stand up and start applauding. We need people to understand that. I'll add to that, we also need engineers. We've got to take that technology, that understanding, and put it into reality. I'm going to give you a little bit of information about controlled environments, I hope, because we are the leader in greenhouse technology and food production, and particularly for young people. This is a great opportunity, if you've never been in production agriculture before, to get into it now, and here's why. i got to figure out a way to grow three years' worth of food here on a planet where nothing grows. When I heard about the Martian, I was, I was very pleased. Um, it was particularly interesting when they began discussing what we do for our research here at the University of Arizona. Phenomenal to hear the challenges that Mr. Watney had in growing his crops. We had the exact same challenges. The lunar greenhouse is a controlled environment that keeps the temperature, humidity, light, so plants will grow. It also has a hydroponic system in it to provide the water and the nutrients for plants to grow. We have a wide array of sensors that monitor all the environmental conditions in there. We have um, a controller that we can program and make changes to the day-to-day -day routine that the plants experience. And just being able to collect all that data and really understand the behavior of the system through that data is really very interesting for me. This greenhouse is being supported by NASA so that someday people will live and work on another planet. When they do, they need food. Uh, they need life support. If we can keep it alive and recycle the water, have sufficient energy, more seeds to grow more plants, and the ability to recycle our human wastes, that's a bioregenerative life support system. And it can last on and on and on. Tomorrow you will meet Erica at uh, Biosphere 2, and you'll see a model of the lunar greenhouse. It's the smaller version. It's only 12 foot long. This one's 18 feet long. And um, it's been supported by, oops, that wasn't supposed to go back. Why am I going? We ready? It, it is a uh, crop production system that we call bioregenerative life support. It mimics what the Earth does, Biosphere 1, in that it uses green plants, at least, to recycle carbon dioxide from the uh, astronauts to provide oxygen for them. It takes the water from the hydroponic system, transpires it, puts it into the air, the humidity rises, we condense the, the moisture out of the air, we get fresh water. Then, of course, it provides food calories for people to eat. And one more important thing, it offers psychological benefits of having green plants on that red Martian planet, as we saw in there before. I'm afraid to push. Yes, okay. All the things, the science that we did so that we could develop the engineering to make the system work is listed here. We're producing food. We're monitoring the water. We measure carbon dioxide that we put in. We measure the weight of the food that's produced on a daily basis in the laboratory in real time. All these come together with a climate control in a closed system to work like a greenhouse on another planet. In our case, though, we want to also do this on Earth. Here's an actual photograph of the end view uh, filled with plants and are monitoring the oxygen, the water, and the biomass that's produced in real time. And you can go and see this on the internet at our, our, our lab. There's a web camera there for you to see as well. How do we know this worked? Because we did a study down at the South Pole. Let's start easy, right? Made a food growth chamber about uh, 240 square feet, not much bigger than the stage and was able to grow crops remotely from Tucson, Arizona, where it was plus 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Sorry for the 
that, but and where it would go down to minus 100 at, uh, at the South Pole. Feeding um, um, salads to people living and working there every day who could never get fresh vegetables. Exact same thing like on Mars or on the moon. Bottom line is all these benefits, and you see them listed here, many different crop species grown simultaneously in a hydroponic system, which allows us to control the root zone, that's the water and the nutrients in the roots, simultaneously controlling the aerial part of the plant in the, um, in the greenhouse room. On Earth, they're being built all over, even on top of Whole Foods markets. This is one of our former students that started a business in New York City and has several rooftop greenhouses, growing fresh vegetables that could be harvested in the morning, eaten by noon, or certainly by the evening. And this is what the take home message is, food, energy, water. The combination of those three things will define you and the future of those who are under 30 right now in developing systems that can not only feed the additional people that are on the earth that are coming that we keep getting warned about, but those of us who are still here. And I want three meals a day when I get old and I'm rocking in the wheelchair, okay? So keep that in mind. If we can do it on Earth, I'm sorry, if we can do it on Mars, where resources are very, very uh, limited, then we should be able to do it on Earth, where water is limited in some places, but not all. Nutrients can be available. Energy, so certainly a key. We know how to grow crops on another planet. I'll leave you with this. In the 1960s, many of you were not born, People went to the moon. Yes, they did. It was not done in Los Angeles. They really went to the moon, I can assure you. Eight years worth of time after it was dedicated to do it, using an awful lot of money, 5% of the national yearly budget, um, went to that, to a non-existing technology. No computers, no rockets, no spacesuits. Using the experiences, quote unquote, of the average age of engineers and scientists of 24 years old. Keep that in mind, and let's go to the moon again, and Mars, and let's feed people on Earth. Thank you very much. I have 11 seconds left. Do I get questions? You can take the space ah, they're gonna give me a question. Sir. It's called, it's called urban agriculture, and it's appearing everywhere because young people want to know where their food comes from. They want quality food. It can be grown in greenhouses right now, and it is. There is a large industry growing uh, inorganically as well as organic vegetable crops in controlled environments wherever you need them to be. Can be. What about the cost? The cost is, is related to how much you want to be able to eat. And the bottom line is we will put our energies in there to minimize the cost, maximize production in a greenhouse, 10 times productivity per unit area in a greenhouse compared to in the open field. 90% less water is used, or I should say it's all recycled and goes into crop production. So the numbers are there. I would encourage you to go to our website or ask Erica tomorrow, tomorrow at the Lunar Greenhouse. You'll see the plants growing, and she'll help explain. Uh, she's very good. She's an undergraduate student, just graduated last week, so she's all excited. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it very much.